go over some textbooks that um, you can use for game theory courses. Some, well, you'll you'll see there's there's a bit of an issue with game theory where there's um, it's not always taught at the undergrad level, and so some of the textbooks there's a lot of textbooks that are kind of in this weird space between uh, being appropriate for graduate level, being appropriate for undergrad level. Some books are too simple. Some are definitely too hard if you're seeing it for the first time. So I'm just going to go over some of the books that I either have or have used. And um, yeah, full disclosure, I'm starting a PhD in the fall in 2021. Uh, but I have at my undergrad institution taken the PhD micro sequence. So I took game theory and you know did well enough in it to where I think uh, I could recommend some stuff to help some people out because game theory is one of those ones where there isn't a text like MWG like there is for micro one. There's not like a necessarily definitive text that everyone's going to use. And um, I did a lot of stuff that I think was really helpful where, you know, if you don't understand something that was presented in class or presented in your main textbook, it's always great to have one or two other books that you can go to to get a different um, description of it. So I'm going to talk about some, yeah, some of the books that might be helpful. And, you know, all these books are going to cover basically what you need. So I'm just going to give like a qualitative, you know, my opinion on these things. We're not going to go in depth to the actual content. So uh, we used kind of just as our main text to pull examples and some exercises from, we used Tatalis, Tatalis, his Game Theory and Introduction. And this is definitely sort of like the advanced undergrad you know, maybe master's level kind of thing. Uh, he doesn't go crazy with some of like the harder proofs. Um, you know, calculus is helpful. You definitely need to know some stuff from calculus too. Some probability theory is helpful. Um, actually, just kind of knowing how to do probability. You don't need to know any crazy probability theory. Um, and this is this is, I don't think it would be great to use if you're really trying, like, you know, if you're going to be a theorist or something like that, I don't think this, I, I think there's better things you could even start with. But this is great if you're, you know, you know you're taking game theory next semester or something and you want to read this over Christmas break or the summer or something like that. Uh, it has it has a lot of examples. It's it's easy enough to read through, you know, it's, it's wordy. It's not just like theorem proof, theorem proof. It's not that kind of thing. So... Yeah, I think this would be a great thing if I knew I was taking game theory next semester. I had never done any game theory, and I wanted to read through something um, and get a good sense of what I'm going to be seeing. Um, it's it's a good book, and it's not it's not that it's not rigorous. It's just not nearly as rigorous as some of the other stuff here. Uh, a warning about the exercises. A lot of the exercises aren't great. Some of them are wrong. Some of them are not formulated with kind of enough information to solve the problem the way you would want. And... Um, a lot of them are ambiguous. I felt like uh, myself and a lot of the other students who took the class had a lot of trouble with that. Um, these two books by Herbert Gintis are um, pretty good. I think Game Theory Evolving is definitely appropriate sort of at the undergrad level. He has a nice introduction to probability at the beginning, and then it's a lot of presenting problems or types of problems or um, solutions that you'd want to figure out to different situations and he uses that to present the concepts throughout so game theory evolving is another good one that is definitely a good first uh, look at game theory if you've never done it before i think this is a decent book and then his companion book the balance of reason is definitely uh, a step up as far as sort of difficulty and rigor and is I'm not sure it's great as a textbook, but if you maybe have taken undergrad game theory and want to get like a real good sense of some of the underlying issues and how things fit together and um, some of the philosophical things going on with game theory, this is, you know, it's it's rigorous. There's a lot of math in this, but it's also kind of a discussion of some of these topics. So he says this is a companion book to Game Theory Evolving, but I think Bounds of Reason could be read on your own after you're familiar with game theory. If you're from, if you want to learn um, a bit more, think about some of the underlying stuff going on. I, I see this used. Um, I think this is used in under, some undergrad stuff. It's used at the master's level with some places. Um, it's kind of what you get on the box. It's a uh, game theory for applied economists. So there's a lot of you know I/O applications and things like that in this. I didn't use this. I think I had a copy of it from the library, and I actually <laughs> never really opened it. I think I opened it, you know, once or twice to look at something, and I thought that stuff was better presented in another book. So I don't really have a, a good opinion on this. 
uh, these two books um, are definitely good, again, if you're kind of self-learning, uh, you know, I'm thinking for undergrads maybe in the summer who have never done game theory, specifically this Game Theory 101, all this stuff's on YouTube. It's like, you know, meant to kind of coincide with a YouTube thing. This is not going to give you a super rigorous um, presentation of game theory. But if you learn well by sort of doing problems and figuring out how the problem, different problem types work, this has really good sort of like step-by-step -step basic problem solving for a lot of the uh, introductory type of games that you're going to encounter. So this is not a bad book, and I think it's pretty cheap. So, you know, maybe it's worth picking up for some people. And then a, a sort of similar one that I definitely think is helpful if, you know, maybe you have a stressful class where you have a lot of quizzes, a lot of problem sets, a lot of tests that are computational and things like that. This um, Munoz Garcia and Toro Gonzalez uh, book from Springer, The Strategy and Game Theory, is just, um, if I remember correctly, this doesn't really present theorems or anything. This is just problems and then ants and then worked through answers, right? So you can imagine this is just basically a giant um, set of problems and an answer key. And the answer key is really thorough. Like it walks through everything. It, it's definitely done, again, like at sort of a, a lower level, but it, I, th I think I think a, a lot of this would be helpful for graduate courses. Again, specifically if you have like a pretty computational heavy professor or something like that. And definitely if you're self-learning, I think picking up this one is uh, a pretty good call. Uh, then you have the two books um, uh, by Osborne, and he did he worked with Rubenstein Rubenstein for the second one. Um, this one uh, I think is pretty good. This is another really good sort of introductory introductory one. Uh, it walks through uh, excuse me a ton of the uh, examples and problem types and motivates everything pretty good, and it's also decently rigorous for sort of an introduction. Uh, this second one I was not a huge fan of. I know a lot of people sort of say that this one's the undergrad one and this is the graduate one. Um, I think this would be appropriate if you had sort of supplementary material for a graduate introduction. I think this is at least somewhat comparable to Tatalus's book or something like that. But the course in game theory by both of them is, if I'm remembering right, it's, it's really just theorem proof, theorem proof, theorem proof, right? And... I think it's very hard to learn from, right? Like, I just don't think <laughs> it would be super useful. Um, it may be useful for people who, you know, are consulting uh, things pretty often. They're looking for theorems or they need help with proofs and stuff. It may be helpful for that. But as a main text, I have a hard time seeing how that would be great for students who didn't have any, you know, a lot of people who do uh, even like the PhD sequences, they didn't have game theory in undergrad. So it's like, Getting a book that's just theorems and proofs is going to be tough for a lot of people. Um, so it's worth getting if you already know what you're doing, but I think there's a, a better book that I'll mention later that kind of is similar with being uh, pretty rigorous and full of theorems and stuff like that. Uh, this is a real co common one. I'm sorry it's not. The picture's kind of crappy, but this is by uh, Fudenberg and Tirole, I guess is how you say his name. Um, and this, for a while, I think was the standard graduate game theory text. It's another one that... I didn't like it um, at first as far as learning from it goes, but it is a good book. I just think it's uh, the formatting I'm not a huge fan of and the presentation I'm not a huge fan of, right? Like there's a lot of sections of just like long text that sort of is talking through things and the math isn't, um, you know, like the computations and things aren't as clearly offset as uh, they could be. And it's a little clunky to get, th like, to, you know, read through and find the stuff you want to find. It, it has that issue, which I'm sure some other people get annoyed at, where very often they'll be referring to a figure that seems like it's always on the previous page or, you know, two pages away. And, um, yeah, it, feel, it feels kind of dated just in its presentation. But as far as what's there, I mean, it, it covers the great stuff, and it was kind of used uh, for a while for a reason. So it's, it's probably good to have or, you know, get from your library for the semester. Um, I've consulted with it a bunch, you know, where it's like I read uh, a topic and something else and then I go and read it in here, but I, I just find the presentation frustrating. So it's not a bad book at all. Um, maybe some other people will like the way it's presented. Uh, these are two books that I think are definitely kind of a, 
I found them to both be a bit of a step up from the other two, or from the previous ones, as far as uh, difficulty. I think the Meyerson one is definitely um, super rigorous. Um, definitely, I would say, not the first thing you want to pick up on game theory, but is definitely great to have around um, once you're kind of into this, especially if you're going to be a theorist or something like that. And same thing for this modeling strategic behavior, which I think he has a copy of this on his website. Um, yeah, I think you could probably find this online legally. But uh, this, again, it's, it's not going to be great if you've never done game theory, but it's good to have around if you've already taken a class or you want something to consult for, um, you know, results and things like that. And it covers mechanism design in the second half. So now we're going to... These are the three. These are my three favorite. So if I was taking game theory for the first time... I would pick up these three books. Um, I think these are pretty amazing. I think this this game theory one by Mashler, Solon, and Samir is um, one of the best textbooks I own. And these two books are just amazing for developing intuition and things like that. So the first one of these I got was this Games and Decision by Luce and Rafa. And this is from Dover, so I think you could probably get it for like 13 bucks new or something like that. And this is pretty old. I think it came out in 1960, maybe, some, somewhere around there. So a lot of these results were new. You know, the Nash stuff had come out not too, uh, not too long before then. But this spends a ton of time talking about intuition, about behavioral examples, about how realistic assumptions are, about tons of different applications and examples. Um, the ap applicability of game theory in general, but also presents um, most of the results pretty rigorously. Um, it's not as crazy heavy on math as some of the other books will be, but this is an amazing book. It's something you can read. Uh, <laughs> maybe not everyone, but you could read it on the train or the beach or something like that. Um, I think this is an awesome book. I think uh, the first couple chapters are worth reading, even if you're not doing game theory. It covers um, utility theory and some stuff like that. So, if I were, if I knew I was taking game theory next next semester, I would pick this up right away, start reading through this. Don't use it as a textbook, just read it as something, you know, you're reading through. And then Ben Moore, who is a mathematician, his uh, Playing for Real is an amazing book. And it's kind of, I, I kind of view it as, it's, it's kind of similar to this uh, Games and Decision book where it's covering intuition, it's covering philosophy, it's covering why we make certain assumptions, how reasonable certain assumptions are. But... And it's, it's kind of fun. I mean, if anyone's read uh, Gödel Escher Bach, it has sort of that same sort of uh, rigorous goofiness where it likes kind of weird examples and things like that. Um, and this, again, it's, it, it may not cover enough for a lot of students, um, at least not as, um, it's not going to present the stuff as quickly as some other textbooks would. But this is another book that's awesome to just kind of read through when you have a chance. You know, you just get out a pen and paper and you kind of go through the examples as he presents them and he's going to give you a lot to think about. So both of these are just great for, I think, developing intuition behind the concepts of game theory and uh, dealing with tons of the underlying philosophy. And, you know, a lot of people when they're presented with mathematical stuff and, you know, applied mathematical stuff like game theory is very often it's like, well, why do we do that? Or like, why does that make sense? And it's like these books both give sort of a rigorous treatment of a lot of those problems and both of them you could sort of learn your first your first um, introduction to game theory from you could you're going to learn about all the concepts that you want to learn about from particularly bin more because there's definitely going to be some stuff left out uh, just because the games and decision books older and then um, this book by Mashler, Solon and Samir is I think it's just amazing um, I bought the both editions of this um, <laughs> Yeah, I, I think it's it definitely seems like it's written sort of by mathematicians as opposed to um, economists. Just like it's it's kind of hard to explain why, but I think if you see it, it feels more like a math book than a economics book. But to me, this seems like something like an MWG for game theory. I mean, it's a huge book. It covers tons of stuff. There's tons of examples. They present theorems. They prove basically everything. Yeah. Yeah, if I were taking a class, this is like the thing. You can use it as an encyclopedia. You can use it to learn from. 
I think this book is just amazing. Um, I definitely think it's it's uh, sort of at the graduate level, you know, advanced undergrads could, could definitely handle it. It's nothing crazy, but this would be sort of the one book I would take with me to a desert island if I uh, had to solve a bunch of game theory problems or write a paper or something. And then if you're going on to sort of uh, maybe after you finish the class, you want to see some extensions of game theory or some applications of game theory, um, there's some obvious places to look. So one is uh, algorithmic game theory, which these, these uh, Tim Roughgarden, he has a ton, he has a YouTube channel that um, corresponds to the chapters in this book. He also does stuff on algorithms more generally and some mechanism design stuff, but this is a great book. Um, there's a lot of interesting stuff you'll kind of find in each champ chapter. He uses examples. He it has some pseudocode in it, so it's helpful if you're you know maybe learning to code in uh, a language. You can try to translate some of the pseudocode and stuff like that. And there's a lot more complicated algorithmic game theory books, um, but I think this is kind of the good place to start because it's it's a tough subject. You know, it's not something I've gotten into like crazy. I've, I've read this book and I have two of the other books on it, but it's. Uh, it's definitely hard to jump into, and I think Rough Garden is going to be your best intro to that. Then um, the next obvious place is mechanism design, which a lot of people cover in their uh, Micro 2 class. You're going to learn some mechanism design at the end. And there's a book by Demetrios Diamantaros, who was actually um, one of my professors and supervisors at my undergrad. And he has this book, Toolbox of Economic Design, which I think is, you know, I've, I've read, you know, maybe three of the intro mechanism design books. And I think it's the easiest to uh, read through and get into. I think mechanism design is like a pretty tough subject for a lot of people. And if you pick up some of the other ones like Tillman uh, Borgers or something like that, it's, it's very easy to get turned off um, from mechanism design when you first see it. And I think uh, Dr. Diamantaris is um, his book on this, which he wrote with some grad students uh, a decade or so ago. Um, is the place to go. I think this is going to be your best intro if you want to get into mechanism design and you're um, maybe not intimidated, but you, you want to be able to uh, really learn the material without struggling. I think this is going to be helpful. Then there's the uh, evolutionary game theory and biology applications. And the sort of famous book on that is John Maynard Smith's. I haven't read this book, but um, I think it's kind of a classic for the biology applications. And then two more. Um, Extensions or Applied Versions of Game Theory. You're going to get Political Game Theory. This is a good book. Um, I actually think it's like, I'm not sure what it's used in, like in political science or something, but reading through it, I thought it was pretty uh, rigorous for people who hadn't have had uh, game theory before. Like I can imagine some poli-sci kids being really turned off by uh, some of the stuff in this book. I mean, it's not, it's not anything crazy. It's not more rigorous than, say, Meyerson or anything, but... Uh, this is going to cover a lot of stuff. It teaches, it kind of assumes you don't have a huge background in game theory, but it really does jump into it real quick. And then you're going to learn all the concepts uh, with political applications, right? And some of this stuff deals with also conflict theory. There's some books on conflict that you could uh, look at after this. And then contract theory also kind of requires some game theory. So this is another place to look for people who are into contract theory. There's another one, I think, called a primer on uh, contract theory, which I thought was, it was fun to read, but it wasn't really set up like a textbook the way I like. It didn't have too much stuff like offset. It didn't have uh, as clear theorems and proofs as this book does. I saw some people call this, in one review, they said it might be treated like MWG for contract theory. Um, I don't know about that, but uh, I've read through, you know, the first half or so of this book, and I thought it was pretty great, so it's worth picking up if you're into contract theory. So uh, that's it as far as this stuff goes. Um, hopefully it was helpful for maybe some people who are trying to figure out what books to buy. Um, obviously buy whatever your professor says, but you know, maybe some of the books I mentioned here might be helpful for you, so thanks.